Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. It is Monday, March the 22nd. We are not live streaming on YouTube. We are not live streaming on Facebook, but we are on Periscope and on Twitch as of right now, just so that we can actually get this out on those programs. Uh, today, I am sitting here watching Oregon up by 18 on Iowa right now, and it is a bloodbath. Excuse me, now it's back to 20. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I wanted to go ahead and get a show out. Um, but man, what a what a fantastic day of basketball we have lined up. We've got some great matchups that will be going on all day long, and I could not be more excited about it. Uh, we're going to roll through recaps from over the weekend. We are going to discuss... Uh, I'm going to give you my bets. So I've already I took Oregon plus five. Big Ten appears to be uh, vastly overrated. Uh, who knows, right? But we're going to talk about a lot of that. Go ahead and take my ear out. We're just going to talk today. We're just going to have fun, and it's going to be a good time. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into the first thing. WinningCuresEverything.com is the website. Make sure that you go ahead and check that out. It's got everything you need to know about us, everywhere you need to be subscribed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Again. Quick show today. Uh, SBRPicks.com slash NCAAF. That is your one-stop shop for all of your college football gambling needs. Go and find all the odds, all the futures, all the articles, all the analytics, stats, everything else, previews, etc. will all be over there, including our weekly video on college football. Let me turn on this light right quick. Um, but yeah, go ahead and check that out. Um, it's a lot of fun. We do. It, it, we have a ton of fun with the Sportsbook Review guys. But sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF or the weekly show on YouTube. Just search out SBR Picks on YouTube. Or there is a link in the description if you are watching on YouTube. Uh, or on the podcast, I guess. I'm going to put it in there as well. So, let's go ahead and dive through the recaps right quick. Again, short show today, but we're going to hit on some of the biggest topics from the weekend. We will start in the South region. And starting there... Obviously, you know, Baylor, we knew they were going to beat Hartford, no big deal. Wisconsin upset North Carolina, and I don't know that that was much of an upset because obviously 8-9 game, but Wisconsin drilled a bunch of threes in that first game. So then, of course, you've got Baylor and Wisconsin. Baylor took care of business there. That was fitting. That was fitting. That was what was supposed to happen. So Baylor moves on to the Sweet 16. Villanova beat Winthrop. I had Winthrop in my bracket. Villanova has figured out how to play without Colin Gillespie. Uh, they got hot from three in the round of 32 on Sunday night. Uh, good gracious. So Purdue was upset by North Texas. That was a fantastic upset, a fantastic storyline. Everything about it was great. Uh, so North Texas moved on, and then Villanova just absolutely put them to sleep with the three ball on Sunday night. So Villanova and Baylor, that's going to be a fantastic coaching matchup. Scott Drew against Jay Wright. I, I don't know that it gets much better than that. So, go ahead and uh, and be prepared for that one. Texas Tech uh, got a win over Utah State. I had Utah State in my bracket. I thought they might be able to muck it up a little bit. This Chris Beard team did not seem like a vintage Chris Beard team to me. And, you know, Arkansas gets by Colgate. Gave them a little trouble early. Arkansas got things rolling. Then you had Texas Tech-Arkansas in the second round. Arkansas was able to squeak by... Texas Tech missed the layup at the buzzer, but it was it was what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a toss-up, and, you know, I, I was able to win a bet with Arkansas plus two. I couldn't believe they were the underdog in that spot, but they were the underdog for a reason. Texas Tech, I think, is the better coach team, but I don't think they got the better players. Uh, I've got Arkansas and Baylor in my Elite Eight, and I've got Baylor going to the Final Four. Uh, that is still set up for me, but we shall see. Uh, moving on, Florida got a win over Virginia Tech in overtime. I still think, as far as games go, that was the best game of the NCAA tournament so far. Like It, it wasn't the best matchup. It wasn't the best storyline, whatever. But as far as pure game, like best played, two teams really going at it, Virginia Tech got not a buzzer beater, but they hit a three with like one second left to be able to send it to overtime. That was a fun game. So I was all in on that. Uh, Florida gets the win there in overtime, and they move on to face Oral Roberts, who snuck by Ohio State, got a big-time upset. I mean, it was 
Everybody was talking about it, and that was maybe the first sign that maybe the Big Ten might have been a little bit overrated. Now, obviously, upsets happen. You know, it, one team has a really good day, the other one has a really bad day. All the uh, upsets can happen in a myriad of different ways. But Oral Roberts came back out in the second round and beat Florida and looked good doing it. Like, this is a pretty well coached team, and now Oral Roberts moves on. And they've already played Arkansas once this year. They led Arkansas by 10 at the half earlier in the season. Arkansas came back and kind of kind of whipped up on them in the second half. But my goodness, uh, Arkansas and Oral Roberts rematch in the Sweet 16. Would not have expected that when, uh, when these brackets got laid out. But hey, you never know. You never know with these things. So that's going to wrap up the South. Let's move into the Midwest. And first thing we'll talk about, Illinois. So they get by Drexel. Fully expected. Loyola Chicago gets by Georgia Tech. Uh, we expected that with Moses Wright out of that game. Loyola Chicago is proving it. They are a really good team. They were so incredibly underseeded, it almost wasn't even fair. I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it, it the Ken, I, I do know how to explain it because if you look at who they've actually beaten this year, there's not a lot of big names. But they are top 10 in every metric in the country. And, and were before this bracket was released, putting them as an 8 or a 9 seed was just wrong. And I think the committee realizes that, but it's, you know, you can't base everything off of numbers, but my goodness, man, that was that was something else. So, uh, so Loyola Chicago gets a massive, massive upset over Illinois. That was an in-state battle. Uh, that's, that's fun to watch. Kurtwig is as advertised. He is so much fun to watch. That team is so much fun. Porter Mosier has gone from, eh, you know, he might get the Marquette job or he might take DePaul and stay in the same city or whatever. He might get the Indiana job to now. Everybody's talking about him for possibly NBA jobs. Who knows at this point? I mean, if he can take them to another Final Four, that's just unheard of for a team from from a, a, a conference like that. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, moving on, this is the the bracket of upsets here. This is the region of upsets. Oregon State gets the upset over Tennessee. I don't know how much of an upset that was. Tennessee, not very good. Haven't been all year. They have not been able to figure out those pieces. They might do better next season by having some of those seniors gone. Sometimes you have too many good players. They do have a lot of good players. They have recruited well. But Rick Barnes, obviously, over however long, he's 2-13 and 13 against the spread in the NCAA tournament. That's not good. Or 2-13-1. and one. That's not a good thing. He's 1-5 in uh, the NCAA tournament at uh, Tennessee against the spread, that is. But, yeah, that was, um, it just, it, it is what it is. Tennessee laid an egg, kind of like a lot of people thought they would. So, Oregon State moved on there. Oklahoma State got a win over Liberty, one by nine. I had Liberty plus seven and a half in that spot. I thought Liberty might be able to give them trouble, and they did for the most part. But the game got away, lost the bet is what it is. So Oregon State moved on to face Oklahoma State, and Oregon State kind of put it on them. They are playing as well. Wayne Tinkle, his team, is just ridiculous right now. I don't know that anybody expected this out of them. I thought we might be able to get an upset over Tennessee in the first round. Did not expect them to beat a team in Oklahoma State that was playing really well. But Oklahoma State, young team. Oregon State looks to have some experience and whatnot, and these are these guys are hungry. I mean, really, really hungry. So, in the Sweet 16, you get Loyola, Chicago, and Oregon State. And I would have never thought that. And that's partly what makes March so much fun, right? Moving on from there, Syracuse got a big win over San Diego State. That was kind of a toss-up one way or another. And Syracuse is hitting shots right now like crazy. Uh, Buddy Bayheim is just ridiculous from outside right now. Uh, so they beat West Virginia, who got a first-round win over Moorhead State. That was an incredible back-and-forth game. Bob Huggins against Jim Beheim. Beheim, every time he's a double-digit seed, he does it every time. And this is three for three. He has made the Sweet 16 as a 10 seed or worse. That's crazy to me. I just I don't I don't get it. It's like they turn it on at the very end of the of the season for whatever reason. Uh, but they did not look like this in ACC play. I just I, I don't understand. Uh, Oregon, as of right this second. 95-80 to 80 over Iowa with 35 seconds left. So Oregon will be moving on in their side of the bracket. Uh, the two seed goes down. And I don't know if that actually makes it easier for Gonzaga or not. I mean, we'll see. We will see. But either way, we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Um, Rutgers 
Got a win over Clemson. First NCAA tournament win for Rutgers in forever. Steve Peichel uh, did the damn thing, and that was impressive. Houston got a win over Cleveland State and beat the brakes off of them. You know, it, it, it was what it was. But, uh, but Houston was down significantly, I think by 10 points at one point in the second half, late in the second half against Rutgers, and found a way to come back and, and scratch and claw their way to a win in that second game. And, you know, Houston gets the win. Houston is my Final Four team out of that bracket. And so far, they're the only team I got left in that bracket. <laughs> so, so that is the way that that moves on. We will go to the West and the West bracket, uh, West region. Gonzaga, massive win over Norfolk State. Not a surprise there. Uh, Oklahoma gets a win over Missouri, even without their starting uh, guard. And that kind of makes sense because Missouri has been losing to uh, weaker competition for the last month or so. They started out really, really well, but Quanzo Martin, this kind of what happens with uh, with his teams for whatever reason. So Gonzaga and Oklahoma are going to play tonight. I'll give bets on all of these games for Monday here in just a minute. Uh, Creighton gets a win over UC Santa Barbara. I had UC Santa Barbara in the Sweet 16 in my bracket. Creighton beats them by one. Uh, Ohio gets the upset over Virginia, and now we have Creighton and Ohio, and I'm excited about this matchup. I think Ohio can can win the game. I don't know which version of Creighton we're going to get. No idea. If Marcus Zagorowski is going nuts, then obviously Ohio is going to be in trouble. But Creighton could end up being in trouble because Jason Preston might go nuts. I mean, he is an NBA player. He is going to play in that league. He's unbelievable, and he is the best storyline going in that region right now. Uh, moving on from there, USC gets a win over Drake. Kansas gets a win over Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington made it a lot of fun. And as of right now, it is just broken that Eastern Washington's coach is taking the Portland job. Not Portland NBA, Portland College. I was surprised by that because they played really, really well. I thought he might have been able to work his way up to an even bigger job. Uh, ben said, I think I'm dead last. Uh, I'm, I'm not doing well. I'm like middle of the pack right now. But I do have the most remaining points available. I've only lost one Elite Eight team. That would be Illinois. So I'm I'm doing okay as far as the bracket is concerned. Uh, but USC and Kansas, this is the battle for the FBI, basically. These are two teams that will probably be on probation go, sometime going forward. But they were both caught in that FBI scandal. I thought it was very funny that they ended up pairing these two together. I think USC is going to win that game. But we'll, we'll talk about it in just a bit. Oregon, uh, no contest over VCU. This was all of the news on Saturday. And, you know, VCU had issues maybe going back to uh, the A-10 tournament in Dayton. Uh, who knows what's going to happen with this, but Oregon did not have to play on Saturday. Iowa did play against Grand Canyon and got a, a tougher game than I think they imagined that they would. And Oregon just blew the doors off of Iowa. Just blew the doors off of them. So, um I mean, we'll see. Oregon, I, I think that they were under as well, kind of like Loyola Chicago, but is what it is. Uh, moving on, Michigan and Texas Southern. This is down to the east region. And da, 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 da. like I said, this is going to be like a 20-minute show today uh, because of all the games and everything else. But east region, Michigan beat up on Texas Southern. Not surprising. Uh, LSU and Texas Southern actually gave them a little bit of a ball game. They were able to match with them athletically. So... Uh, Michigan over Texas Southern. LSU got a big win over St. Bonaventure, and that should not have surprised anybody. St. Bonaventure does not have a deep bench. LSU has depth for days, and they have athletes that will run you up and down the court. So LSU handled them uh, really maybe easier than Michigan handled Texas Southern. So, uh, so you got Michigan and LSU tonight. Colorado beat up on Georgetown like they were uh, not even a, a power team, like they didn't belong in the field. And had they not won the Big East tournament, they wouldn't have been in the field. But at 96-73, to 73, and they they shot threes like it was going out of style. They could not miss. McKinley Wright got another double-double. Uh, just ridiculous. Florida State looked good, and then went over UNC Greensboro. So that is definitely a big thing. Uh, so Colorado-Florida State, I think that's going to be a really fun matchup. Really fun. BYU got upset by UCLA. I thought BYU was going to come out and prove some people wrong. A lot of people had that upset early. And UCLA came out. I thought Johnny Juzang was hurt in that Michigan State game. Like, seriously hurt. And he comes out firing. 
against BYU. And I don't I don't understand it. Like people look like they're on their deathbed in some of these games, look like they are injured and out forever, and then they just come back, you know, two days later. No no issue. Just hitting on all cylinders. So UCLA gets a win there. The biggest upset of the night, maybe of the entire tournament. Like Oral Roberts over Ohio State is one thing. Abilene Christian beating Texas is completely out of the realm of possibilities. Or at least it should have been. Texas just won the Big 12 championship tournament. Like the Big 12 tournament. Like I I, I don't... Shaka Smart might be smart to get on the next thing smoking out of Austin. Like it, it is not working at Texas for whatever reason. Um, it was a great year. Successful season. But when you get beat by Abilene Christian, like obviously you can call it fluky if you want to. 58% free throw shooter gets up and knocks down two of them straight with 1.2 seconds left to beat you. That's nuts. But if you are Texas, if you are the flagship school of the state, you cannot be losing an NCAA tournament game to Abilene Christian. That's just not how that goes. So, moving on, Maryland upset UConn. I don't know how much of an upset that was. UConn was a three-point favorite in this game. And Maryland is not great, but I will tell you this. They played uh, tougher competition than UConn did. UConn, if you look at their wins on the season, it's like three of them over DePaul. They beat Georgetown twice. They beat, you know, da-da-da. It's, there's no really big wins there. So... And the good teams that they played, you know, Creighton and Villanova, they got beat by them multiple times. So, I, maybe this isn't that much of an upset. Uh, Alabama gets a win over Iona. Rick Pitino, uh, we should have seen this coming. Should have seen it coming. Rick Pitino, like Alabama was favored by 16 and a half or 17 at tip. Pitino, obviously Hall of Fame coach. But the biggest thing here is Iona was number 23 in the country at three-point defense efficiency. Three-point defensive efficiency. If Alabama can't get going from outside the arc, they have trouble. It is what it is because they only take layups and threes. Well, if you're running them off the three-point line, then you got an issue, right? Maryland, not going to be able to do that. They're number 204 in that same category. Uh, Abilene Christian, if that's who Alabama ends up playing in the Sweet 16, if Alabama can get by Maryland, which the game still terrifies me, um, but if they end up playing Abilene Christian, Abilene Christian is number 13 in the country in three-point defensive efficiency. That's terrifying. Terrifying. Because they can muck it up. They can make it crazy. The Abilene Christian over Texas win, by the way, largest discrepancy in shots I have ever seen in an NCAA tournament game. Texas took 40 shots. Abilene Christian took 67. 67! That is incredible to me. So... At 27 more shots than the other team. That's why you can shoot under 30% and still win a game like that. Just crazy. All right, let's close out with this. I got bets for Monday night, and then, of course, Tuesday, Wednesday, blah, 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 blah. Chris and I will be doing shows. We'll be doing live shows. We'll we'll figure something out. Our next live show is going to be on Wednesday, but I wanted to go ahead and get this one out there. Uh, I already had Oregon plus five today, so we won't count that. On the record, I'm not doing the record as of right now. We're going to start that back up. We're going to fix up the website. If you hadn't seen it, by the way, worked on the website a little bit over the weekend while I was watching basketball. Uh, kind of, kind of proud of it. It looks a little better. So go and check it out for me. But uh, Oklahoma plus 15 and a half against Gonzaga. I think that number's just gotten a little too crazy. I think Oklahoma can slow things down, and Gonzaga I think will win this game handily. I think that Oklahoma can keep it within 15 and a half. Uh, UCLA minus five against Abilene Christian. I think that UCLA might be a little more used to chaos than Texas. So I'm going to take UCLA to win and cover the five. Uh, Ohio plus five and a half against Creighton. If for no other reason than dogs have, have kind of shown up in this tournament. And I don't know what to expect from Creighton. I do think that Ohio matches up insanely well with them. Their talent matches up against Creighton's. So I will take... Ohio with a larger than expected spread. Uh, LSU plus five against Michigan. I think LSU is going to win the game outright. I don't think Michigan is that good without Isaiah Livers or without uh, Eli Brooks being 100%, and he's not back yet. He's not back to 100%. So uh, moving on from there, Florida State, I've got them minus one and a half against Colorado. Yes, Colorado, it looks like a trendy pick to be able to take them, especially when they were shooting as well as they did the other day. But remember this, everybody switches to a different arena. Every other game, or every next game, whatever it is. 
if you are moving around, you don't get as comfortable shooting. If you felt really good at that one arena, I think they played in Hinkle on Saturday. I think Colorado and, uh, and Georgetown did. Um, if you are comfortable in one arena, well, now you have to switch it up and you have to go somewhere else. So I don't think Colorado will hit at quite the same rate that they did against Florida State. I'll take Florida State to win that one just based off of talent and whatnot. Uh, Alabama minus six against Maryland. I, I think Alabama will be able to shoot from three in this game. And I don't think Maryland matches up well with them, but obviously we will see, and I am terrified. Um, USC, as a pick em against Kansas, again, the FBI game, absolutely love it. Uh, the NCAA may not have done this on purpose, but I really hope that they did, because this is a fascinating storyline. So, I will take USC to win that game straight up. I picked it in my bracket. Um, you know, it's a pick em. It It opened up as USC minus one, and... It dropped back down to Kansas minus one, and now it's back to a pick em. So I will take USC. I think that they can bully Kansas in this spot. I think the Mobley brothers are going to show out, and I trust Andy Enfield in this tournament a lot more than I trust Bill Self. I know that's weird to say, but that's what I like about it. So we are going to talk Deshaun Watson and all that on, on Wednesday's live show because I want Chris to be here for us to discuss this because – from the time that we talked last week for our live show until now, it has gone from one woman making allegations against Deshaun Watson to 22 different women. And it has gone from a civil suit, which there are multiple civil suits, but they have now dropped off the cases, uh, all of the cases to the police in Houston, and they are looking at possible criminal charges. And I don't know what to make of any of this. This just seems absurd to me. So we're going to talk to Chris about it on Wednesday. We will figure it all out. He might actually do a solo show tomorrow, but we'll see. We'll see what all happens. So I appreciate all of you jumping in on the show today, the NCAA tournament. I am so fired up about it. So fired up. And hopefully all of you are as well. Keep checking the website. The Husbands versus Wives Challenge is going great. Our bracket challenge is still rolling right along. I'm not doing well. Chris is not doing well. But there are some people who are. We will talk about bragging rights and all that after the second round is over. Uh, and that will end this evening. So I hope that you all have wonderful days. I hope that you all uh, continue on with a great week. I hope the weather stays good. We don't have to deal with tornadoes and all that kind of stuff. But... Uh, Let's go ahead and get out of here. SBRPicks.com slash NCAAF. And as I told you, the website. Go and check out winningcureseverything.com. Let me know how you like the new site. Tell me if it's working for you. All that good stuff. So uh, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And hopefully, all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.